Hey everybody, welcome back to Word Balloon. It's the end of the year and uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much for being on the journey uh, through 2019. It was a weird year, but uh, through your support and listenership, it made it that much better. And uh, I want to thank you very much uh, for listening to Word Balloon as much as you do and uh, making it a terrific year. Uh, you continue to inspire me and make me move forward with uh, more interesting ideas. I've got a lot of plans for 2020. Uh, it, it's an important year. It'll, it's the 15th anniversary of Word Balloon come May. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm busting a move to trying to make Word Balloon a bigger and better thing. So thanks a lot for your support. Questions or comments about the show, reach me via email, john at wordballoon.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at John Word Balloon, or on my uh, Facebook page, John Sandra said, of course, uh, the Word Balloon Network uh, p- page as well. Thanks for listening to the commercials. There might be one more before the show starts. But as always, I appreciate your attention and patience. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suntra is here as we close out the year and technically close out the decade. I know some people, it's, you know, not uh, the end of the decade until 2020 wraps up. But I think you can honestly say that whether you end your decade uh, with the end of 2019 or the end of 2020, that if there's one character of the decade from Marvel or DC, it has to be Miles Morales. He debuted in 2011 in uh, the new Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Uh, the fallout out of, out of uh, was it Ultimatum? No, it was something else. I can't even remember. It's in the, it's in the interview. But um, I, I wanted to dig out a couple great interviews with Brian Bendis, the creator of Miles Morales, and uh, do the alpha and omega of Miles. And uh, that's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear my first conversation with Brian about the creation of Miles My- Morales why he felt he needed to do it, the initial reaction to Miles Morales, uh, mostly coming from, sorry kids, politics can't help but uh, get in there a bit. Uh, There's always a big explosion uh, from the conservatives of, like, disappointment and outrage. Uh, The same thing happened to Jason Aaron when he uh, turned uh, Thor into Jane, you know, Jane Foster into Thor. And it was a massive discussion on Fox News. Same thing happened on, uh, on Fox as well. Uh, with the real, right, and, and and also uh, you'll hear uh, other conservative uh, uh, pundits uh, who uh, complained that uh, Spider-Man was now half black, half Hispanic. Uh, but uh, I'm shrugging. What what can you do? Well, anyway, uh, all that was part of the uh, initial reaction, and I found that interesting contextually. Uh, and also, God, uh, Miles doesn't have to apologize to anybody because, as we know. Biggest animated movie of the decade, Into the Spider Verse, uh, absolutely uh, cementing Miles, uh, you know, uh, consciousness with the public. Got the movie won an Oscar. That's all you need to know. Hugely popular, continues to be hugely popular as well. Um, they're making a sequel, which is fantastic, and um, yay, because Miles is a great character, and we've certainly learned that. So you're going to get the uh, the start and the creation of. Uh, Miles Morales in a conversation from 2011 with Brian a few weeks before Ultimate Spider-Man debuted. And then also, um, the last uh, time uh, Brian was writing uh, Miles uh, in uh, you know uh, the Ultimate Universe and when he was still working for Marvel, uh, a couple events popped up, Generations, Legacy, and also the second uh, Spider-Man uh, crossover with uh, Peter Parker. And it's interesting because uh, you'll hear at the beginning how uh, Brian w- didn't want the Ultimate Universe to ever cross over with the 616, and yet uh, wrote too many series of the Spider-Men getting together. And uh, it was great stuff. And uh, Peter and uh, Miles' relationship continues to be a very interesting thing. Again, fostered in the uh, Spider-Verse cartoon as well. Uh, really cool stuff. So uh, I think you'll enjoy these conversations as we pay tribute to the character of the decade, as far as the big two goes. Miles Morales talked with Brian Bendis on today's Word Balloon. All brought to you by the League of Word Balloon listeners. Thank you greatly, League, for your support via Patreon. Patreon.com slash Word Balloon. If you'd like to subscribe to Word Balloon, greatly appreciate the uh, support. Uh, And 2020 is going to be a hell of a year. 2019 has been a great year. I thank you greatly for your support, League of Word Balloon listeners. You really stepped up at a tough time for me, and uh, I can't thank you enough. Word Balloon is also brought to you by Aftershock Comics. Uh, We're in the final hours of the Aftershock year-end special that's going on on their online store. Go over there, 
take advantage of it. Everything that's for sale on the online store is at 50% off through New Year's. And, uh, you know, the uh, also if you spend more than $50 and live in the U.S., you can get free shipping. The holiday code for all the deals is uh, HOLIDAY. But uh, check out the e-store. You're going to find graphic novels, graded comics, convention specials, various things like that. Also, just good Aftershock paraphernalia as well. All at 50% off for this year-end holiday special. Go to their website, aftershockcomics.com. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. An interesting conversation with Brian Bendis from August of 2011, just weeks before Ultimate Spider-Man was debuting. I had the why questions uh, and uh, the questions about the reactions to uh, the change that were happening uh, in pop culture. Pretty crazy. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with Brian Bendis about Miles Morales on today's Word Balloon. Let's do some rumor busting. I want to rumor. Please, yeah, okay. Because then, and then I'll ask you some questions about your recent controversy. So go ahead. Okay, they're, they're like, probably yeah. entangled. But you do your thing first, and I'll I'll jump well, in with my rumor. I just obviously want to. I, I feel they're tangled up. Well, this you know this week's the debut of Ultimate Spider-Man. I know we have questions about that, but I I, I, I want to hear. This week, f- isn't it the twenty fourth? Isn't it this week? No, this week is Ultimate's number one. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. oh. Which is oh. very beautiful, by the way. Uh, it's at Ribic and Dean White, and it looks fantastic. Awesome. So I highly recommend. Um, no, we are we are coming up in a couple of weeks. Well, tell me, do you want to bust rumors? Because, I mean, I just want to go back to the origin, some of the decisions in general for this Ultimate Universe. Sure. But, we, we, can, we can do that. Yeah, go ahead and ask your question, and I'll... Well, I'll, uh, I'll you know, it. I mean, it's... Well, there's just the obvious questions. Uh... I think it's a good idea to make the Ultimate Universe different. And obviously yeah. this has been going on since Ultimatum, really. Um, okay, for those of you who not, not, have not heard the word balloon before, here comes a big butt. No, Go ahead. no, not at all. I just want to know, um, you know, yeah, what what was the decision-making? I mean, you know, there's certainly people are, are pointing out that characters that were once white are now, are now of other races and everything, and obviously Ultimate Spider-Man, that's... No news. It's, it's come out and everything. But, you know, just tell me the process of making the Ultimate Universe different moving forward from Ultimatum and everything. And, and you know, what, what, was, uh, what was the room like and what were some of the ideas that were coming out? It, there wasn't a room. Somebody it was just me and Joe, you know, we were talking about, you know, we, you know Mark, Mark has gone off to Malar World. Yes. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, the... the, the, the the founders, if you will, of Ultimate Universe were me, Joe, uh, Bill Jemis, uh, whose idea it was, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and Mark right. Miller. And uh, you know, Mark's gone away. Bill Jemis has gone away to adapt the Bible, and <laughs> it's no, that's not a joke. And uh, All right. and me, me and uh, uh, Joe, you know, we, we we take a great great amount of pride in that the Ultimate Universe has uh, survived. Uh, and is still viable, and is and, and is morphed by on its own power into other things, and and we discuss them uh, often, actually, and uh, uh, it's our baby. It's one of the things we'll we'll be, you know, remembered for, one way or another, and uh, and you know, most most imprints last about two years. Um, you know, they got about two year shelf life. You know, Vertigo uh, made it, and you can count on a hand how many really really stuck, you know what I mean, past a certain amount of time. Sure. And so we're proud of, of that. We're like year 12 or whatever year we're in on the ultimate line when, when everyone was, was betting against it, you know. So um, we would just, we would just talk about what worked and what didn't. And, you know, end of the day, we were always proud of, uh, proudest of the stuff that was different than the Marvel Universe, but not different just to be different, but just different. Uh, and different in an honest way, different in a way that says, I have something to say that's different than normal superhero comics, and I am going to try them. And, and that, that's all the stuff that worked. It, that's all the stuff. When you, when you ask people, what do you think about the Ultimate Universe, they'll mention five things that you've never seen in a comic book before. And the topic of the Marvel Universe being closer to the real world than most fictional universes and yet not always representative of the world we look around in, like the fact that, you know, Daredevil is still fighting Health Kitchen, but meanwhile, if you go to Health Kitchen today, it's actually rather lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a lovely neighborhood. 
Uh, so, um, so the, the things like that. Um, and so some you're, you're more ready to let go of than others. Uh, and, and the other one was uh, that, that, you know, Spider-Man's world was almost Woody Allen in its view of a white New York, you know. And, uh, uh, and But that's not the world you see or live in at all. You felt that um, way about the Ultimate Universe Spider-Man world? Uh, not, per- not while I was writing it. Right. But but looking back on it, if I would make a critique of it, uh, it would be that. And if no one's fault and no one did it on purpose, it's just you look at it and you go, that's not what Queens looks like. Okay. And yeah. um, uh, it, it's, 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 it's as magical a place as Hogwarts. And, uh, that's, you know. <laughs> did you ever get any feedback? Fan. Did you ever get any feedback like that saying, hey, you know. Not really. I, okay. Honestly, this is just all on me, man. You okay. know what I mean? And, okay. And, it's, and I know... There, there will be people who hear this that you think that I, I suffer some white guilt, but I don't have it at all. It's just I'm talking about the world I see versus the world, the way it's being represented in my work, and um, and then that's every author's decision to make. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you know people would criticize Woody Allen off, and I just made a joke about it, but would criticize Woody Allen about a very white New York. Yes. You know, and but that's probably the way, the world he lives in is a Upper West Side. Absolutely, you know, sure. intellectualism. So he's just writing what he knows. He's not writing, you know, he's not trying to whitewash it. That's just what he sees. And and uh, I just felt that end of the day, that's not really what I see. So we you know, we talk about that. And Joe had said years ago and I know Axel had thought this as well before he was in the chief that there were there would be a boy it wouldn't be great if, if Spider Man was um of a different race just because this is he is the most universal of all all the characters. And then we would often hear that I and I have been told this story by numerous people of numerous ethnicities. When I was a kid, I loved Spider-Man because I couldn't see his face, and I just assumed he was like me under there. Or, when I was a kid, I wanted to go with Superman, and my mom wouldn't let me, or my friend said, you can't be Superman, you're black or you're Asian. And I would always gravitate to Spider-Man because I could always argue my way into being Spider-Man with my friends, either playing it or Halloween or whatever, you know? (laughs) Okay. No, I and, and literally someone on the power set told me this story. That's how recently I was told it again. Interesting. And they reminded me how many times I had heard this story. And 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 you're like, yeah, all right, let's take it a step further. And then, you know, so so but we, we so we discussed for like a year about doing, you know, an African American Spider Man or a Latino Spider Man, and I was the one who said, I just, I, I literally can't find a family at this point that that isn't mixed race of some sort you know Mm -hmm. just go with that and i and uh but then the the argument is if if we do this he will always seem inferior to peter parker because peter parker is spider-man so peter parker would have to go so then it becomes again about the ultimate universe where maybe peter parker could go wouldn't that be interesting? It's not, you know, and then, uh, and, and then we were off and running, and then, and then we just got to a time where Joe called up and said it was brought up again in a meeting. Are you ready? And then we brought it up around Ultimatum. I wasn't ready. Okay. And we, and, and we talked about it because there was a perfect place to drown him. <laughs> you know. Sure, sure. And uh, easy, easy drown, no problem. And uh, <laughs> uh, I was, it wasn't time yet. And then, we, and then he called me again and said it was brought up again. Um, are you closer? And I said, no, I actually think I'm right there. And uh, I know there are certain people on the Internet that no matter what they hear from any of us think that this was forced upon me. Absolutely was not. I, I know for a fact that if I, I didn't want to do it, we just wouldn't have, you know. Okay. And uh, it was not Mark Millar's idea. That was uh, a, 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 mis, a misquote by Tom. He was not there. Uh, he thought it was because um, uh, Mark had another idea that involved killing Spider-Man somehow that he may do someday. 
So we won't we say what it was, but it wasn't involving anything about my book because, uh, you know, fortunately he's never read my book, so I don't have to worry about him ever <laughs> fucking with it. And, um, nice. Um, uh, so, so, so it, I, I know some people feel I must have been forced to do this because Peter Parker means so much to me. It, I, I wasn't, and I would, you know, I was up for renewal. I could have easily used this as okay. Then, if you guys can make me kill Spider-Man, I'll just, I'll just go. Uh, you know what I mean? But nothing. It never even got there. I was like, yeah, this sounds great. I'm, I'm ready. I got a story to tell because it really is about what's the story next. And the story next, which which, which you've read, um, it, you know, and, and the fallout. Mm-hmm. These are stories that there were very worth telling to me. Very, very, very worth telling to me. Uh, the other rumor is that Peter Parker will be returning within the first calendar year. Uh, he is not coming back. I know you never say never. I'm going to say never. Interesting. So there's that. Pump, pump, pump. Because it only works if we stick to our guns. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, and I agree. And I, I and also I, I get it first and. Let's start off with a couple other Spider-Men in the in the in the past, and now and I was like saying Spider-Man because suddenly it's like talking about Irish Spider-Man down the street. Yeah, um, the Green Lantern Corps. Spider-Man, yeah. how are you? Uh, no, but uh, I, Mo- I Moshe Spider-Man who, who runs my bagel shop. <laughs> exactly. Nobody puts a crease in my pants like Moshe Spider-Man. Yeah, Moshe Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, the Spider-Man of uh, 2099 Spider-Man was Hispanic. Yeah. And yeah. am I right? Isn't there an wasn't there an Indian Spider-Man? Uh, there was. I don't. I've never read that one. I don't even know if it was. I, yeah, it was in English because they, they they published it. But um, uh, it was produced yeah. in India, I believe. Yeah, and we saw so it in the I, early two thousands, right? Didn't they yeah. have it? And there's a mango one too. I don't know if that's a Peter Parker story too. I have not read that one. Um, uh, but yeah, and there was even like we thought it would. You know, for a second you think would it be funny to name him Miguel O'Hara, and right. then. Um, and then I thought, no, you know, I just I don't want to turn it into, oh, this is the secret origin of 2099 or something. I understand. It, it, it confuses the story that I want to tell. It's not that's not the story. So I, I jettisoned that and went for uh, for elsewhere. I understand. We'll talk about Sp- Spider-Man issue one when you know it's it's the week of and everything, and we can talk about okay. the, the book then. Because yeah, I don't want to you know. If yeah, ho- sure. ho- hopefully we'll talk in a month or in a couple of weeks. Now, now here, here's I'll give you some rumor busting. Yeah, talk to me about rumor um, busting. The one thing that that came out there, and I feel, and the reason I haven't mentioned it is I just feel weird denying the rumor as if there's something wrong with the rumor it, it, that that he's gay. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, it, listen, it was on the Drudge Report as a headline for days. Hilarious. Yeah, okay. Uh, someone in England wrote this as a headline because Sarah said, and I agree, but she said it in broken, broken English, so it was, it, was, it was somehow misconstrued, even though it was clear as day, said, I, I, I just want to live in a world where it doesn't matter if you're black or gay or blah, 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 blah. You're just a hero, right? Sure. And, and that's where we're headed, and this is how you get there, right? That's what she said. That's what she meant. She never said he's gay. He never said it. I never said it. Tom never said it. Joe never said it. Axel never said it in the hundreds of interviews that we did over the course of that week. The headline on George Report was, he's black, dot, dot, and gay, dot, dot. And you're like, because she said the word gay in a sentence, he's somehow gay. Now, I just, Drudge Report's an idiot. And I just let it go. Like, everything on that site, I read and go, what world is he living in? And, and he lives in some world where you say black and he heard gay. And I, so I just let it go. And then yesterday, I was listening to Howard Stern. I'm three days behind on Howard because okay. it's summertime and I got the kids, right? Right. And they, I finally get to, they, they literally had uh, Benji go out on the street and ask people what they thought of, um, you know, and I even hate the term black Spider-Man. Um, because you know that's incorrect and right. weird, but that's uh, super friends. Think, Meanwhile, think, Black Spider Man will talk to yeah, the Hall of Justice. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and and they go, what do you think of the Black Spider Man? And they they ask uh, a, a gentleman, and he would go, "Oh, I think it's great." And they go, um, "But you heard he's also gay." And they go, "Oh, what?" And like that, that's 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 the line. And and then like some guy said, "Why well, do they have to do that?" And I'm like, 
Okay, what's going on? Like, and you know, this is my favorite show in the world. Yes. So it's my reality. <laughs> and my reality is being, being warped. And uh, and, and he just talked about it for like twenty minutes about Spider-Man being gay. And I'm like, all right, listen. And I was like, and like Jason, uh, who is a pal, uh, who is producer of that show. Who, okay. Uh, I didn't step in to stop it, and I realized he doesn't know that it's not true because it was on the judge report. So did you call in? No, I did not call in. No, listen, I'm listening three <laughs> Are you Marianne? Later. Like right after Marianne from Brooklyn? Howard! Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I don't um, want a black and gay, Howard! Yeah, uh, yeah so I, uh, right, I just want to say... Um, it's not the story we're telling. Okay. <laughs> I, if, if I if, if it was in his DNA to be uh, gay, that he that would be great, and I would not shy away from anything like that. But it's just not the story we're telling. Understood. And I don't know how that happened. Well, I know how it happened, but I, I, I don't know. See, my why. favorite my favorite uh, right wing rumor about this was from Glenn Beck that it was Michelle oh, Obama Michelle who Ray. told you to make him black. I'm going to tell you something. That's my I'm favorite. Not, one. I'm not joking around. I'm literally. I can't think of a better thing that's happened in my life, uh, outside <laughs> uh, in my career. Like obviously in my family, but um, but in my career, that may be the best thing that's ever. Happened. I understand. I, I swear. I was I was happier about that for a longer period of time than anything that's happened in my life. Um, I, I really was. That was the craziest thing I'd ever heard. I I, I don't like him, and, uh, <laughs> not, and again, not not because he's conservative. I do not care. I it's because he's an idiot. Yes. That that that, is, that babbles hateful nonsense. Yes. That's why I don't like him. Yes. Um, you know, some people on Twitter were going, "Oh, liberal boy." I'm like, "Well, no, <laughs> actually, you know." That's not where my brain's at. He's an idiot. He, as a human, as a person, as an individual, is an idiot. And he says idiot shit. And he said something truly idiotic, uh, including the fact that he didn't care and comics are stupid. He had to spend 10 minutes on it. I, I absolutely adored every word that came out of his mouth. Well, and as others pointed out, that uh, this was the same guy that loved, you know, the Spider-Man musical and then suddenly had no oh, use for Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, regardless... He opened the door to Keith Olbermann having to rebut him, which then made John Stewart and Colbert have to do something with it. So <laughs> I saw he, Colbert. You know, and uh, I talked about this in, uh, online a little bit, but uh, Oming was here um, for the weekend, and we were literally sitting at my desk watching dailies of powers and have the TV on in the background with the sound off, and you look up and you I, I didn't no one gave me a heads up that there was going to be something on Colbert. And there it was. He, he did good Spider-Man jokes at our expense, like really good jokes. Did you happen to see it? I did. It was excellent. Nation, as everyone knows, I am the world's biggest fan of Spider-Man. What's that, nerds? You're a bigger fan than I am? Really? Well, then here's a Spidey trivia question. Which issue had you on the cover? I... I'm on Amazing Spider-Man number 573, Saving the Webbed Crusader. Well, pretty cool. Well, I'm afraid I cannot save him this time because in the latest issue of Marvel Comics Ultimate Fallout, Peter Parker is killed, presumably while appearing in Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. But worse, now that Peter Parker is dead, there is a new replacement Spider-Man. Big, big shake-up in the superhero world. I mean... Forget about Peter Parker right now. The new Spider-Man is swinging through the pages of Marvel Comics, and his name is Miles Morales. That's a right. Teenager who's half black, half Hispanic. Half black? Half Hispanic? What sort of origin story does he have? Was he a black guy bitten by a radioactive Hispanic? Or a Hispanic guy bitten by a radioactive black guy? It doesn't make any sense. Plus, half Hispanic, really? He's coming here to steal our superhero jobs? It's bad enough we have an illegal immigrant flying around claiming to represent the American way. Go back to Krypton, Kalel. Yeah, great joke. Very and uh, and But it was really surreal. Like, it kept going and going. Well, he's, so a, he's was, one of us. Great. He's a comic book nerd. He totally is. And I know Joe's been on a million times and stuff, and he had the Captain America shield and everything. 
on his set. No, no, I just, I just so. didn't expect, you know, I, I knew we were getting some play from USA Today and whatever. Joe was the one going, oh, this is going to be huge. I'm like, well, I, it's not really up to us whether it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. anything could stop it from being huge. You know, just, you know, Sarah Palin takes a shit on the sidewalk and we're, we're done. <laughs> and, and, um, uh, it was, we just had another slow news day wave that was right. fantastic, you know. So, so, it was, it, it, and you know, as my my fascination with the media, I was absolutely fascinated by Clem Beck saying something character and stupid, and then and then the and the follow up was great. Yeah, was so fantastic. Well, and and as you said, you know these these characters. I agree with you. Spider Man is universal and should be because he's a troubled teen and or a teen that has more responsibility than he's ready for, and obviously. It is that hero's journey that makes him the hero that he is, and that's that's very cool. And it could happen to anybody, and it's interesting to see it happen to a different person with different circumstances. And yeah. we'll see how that story flourishes. I uh, And I understand, this is my understanding, and uh, you'll probably agree, it makes a bigger impact to have it be an A-list hero rather than bring in a new character. We've seen it happen at most of the top companies when you bring in a new character, whether it's of color or not. It's tough to break through the established, you know, rings. And I think the Ultimate Universe, with all the changes that are going on, what Loeb did in Ultimate X as well, um, and even the stuff that Mark introduced in his last couple, you know, a bunch of Ultimate stories as well. Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. not? Why why not? I, why not do it? And why not do it with a with an A list character? The one bit of bullshit that I that you know people were swinging at me online was, why don't you create a new character, you asshole? You know. Uh, if you want to create a character that's of this ethnicity or blah blah blah, why don't right. you create one? And then I pointed out that I I have yes, and the, you are free to buy them. The lead of Powers is an African American woman. Uh, the the lead of Takio is is a mixed race family. Sure. Uh, the leads in Scarlet, not Scarlet herself, but behind her are, are all different ethnicity. So I really wanted to tell those people to shut the fuck up, but. That seems to be a, a rude thing to do, so I didn't. Except I just did here. <laughs> so I'm torn. Well, uh, but it, my desire to tell them shut up. It, 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 it is like you, like yeah, we're, we're doing it, man. It's it's how you can't. Cre- I'm bulletproof on this. You can't. You can't let me. You can't hit me with this. <laughs> Don't buy it. You're the you're the one not buying them. If you didn't know I was doing it, you well, know. Well, and also, well, so. and the and the only thing I like question on that you said online, and maybe it was just a random thing that I saw on Twitter, but it was like a week or so ago that you said the ultimate universe is not an alternate universe. Yes, and I guess I understand. You know, you explain explain that comment because to me it's not that big no. of a deal. No. It's just no. <laughs> okay, no, I'm joking. Yeah, I will. No, I I I, I am uh, in the minority on this. Um. And and I'll, I'll I'll live with that, um, graciously. Um, we 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 are a we are a the culture of, uh, particularly everyone listening to, to this podcast, uh, ha, have been raised with multiverse um, sensibilities. Yes. Um, the ultimate universe, and even calling it the ultimate universe, sends that message that this is an alternative universe of which there is an opportunity. For the Ultimate Universe and the Marvel Universe to uh, team up and fight, like the Justice Society and the Justice League, that is not the um, that is not where we're at. Uh, oh, I understand that story. So it, with that comes, you know, it like 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 somehow like that's the one thing. Like it, like somehow it's the fake Marvel Universe, or it's not really the Marvel Universe. And I would argue that no one says that about the Spider-Man movies, which are of their own universe. Certainly. They're, you know, they're all, and the, and the cartoons, and, and anyone that builds its own um, Spider-Man mythology, no one, no one criticizes that. But when it's in print, somehow it's, it, 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 people who are somehow, I don't know, they seem threatened by it. I don't even know if that's the word, but I don't, they seem angry about it. Um, uh, th- that's how they discount it by saying, "Oh, that's not really." And I'm like, "Well, no, it's 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 been published by Marvel and it has Spider-Man in it, and it, it's it's really <laughs> it's sure. a, it's not an al- alternative universe. You know, it's a really it's a Spider-Man comic, and uh, uh, it's got a logo and everything. So I uh, that that was my argument is that, it, it, that, that when you say it's a multiverse, the multiverse says 
a certain different, a certain kind of mentality that leads to a certain thinking, and that's not, it doesn't apply to the ultimate universe. That's all. Okay. Does that I, make sense? It does, and I can appreciate answering critics like that. I just think there are other people that are very comfortable with this happens in the ultimate universe, this happens in the 616. Uh, and without mitigating, you know, the importance of, you know, the ultimate universe, uh, you know, fine, both can coexist. I, I, to be honest, that's where I'd say never say never on the ult, on the eventual crossover because, and and fine, you and might not have twelve years, man, huh? Twelve years. I understand. That's fine. Well, and again, I guess I was confused because I guess the zo- Marvel zombies kind of confused me because I thought all that kind of. Uh, crossed over, and also, and I, and as I said uh, online, ultimate too, I'm like, power. ultimate power, right? And that's why I'm like, wait, but there's been crossovers with the Ultimate Universe, but I guess technically not the six one six. You have not seen Peter Parker meet Ultimate Peter Parker. True, but that's why, especially now that it's a different character, and I appreciate and accept that you are telling me this is not going to happen anytime soon while you are writing this character. And I and I'll. Uh, I'm, and I'm never going to say. I never said never on this. I'm just saying. It's, okay. it's, it's, <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say. But by the way, just maybe say it's going to happen. But no, no. We listen. The, it would. It would sell. It would be. Right. It would, people. You would. You know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, what, I what do. Would, what would What would cause a message board shitstorm faster than we're merging them? Right. Well, right, but, but, but also, that, it does, that, but that's not that's not it. That's not where it's at. That's I understand, and that you're right at the and beginning of the story too. That's not going to happen from the first day that we announced this. That people said, "Oh, that's what's going to happen." That we're 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 gearing to replace the Marvel universe with some like Jim Shooter new universe. Bullshit. Yeah, and I and never thought that either. No, why would you? Well, but, but people did. People absolutely did. They got right in their face about it. So well, that's all. That's all. all right, I was whatever. Saying. And I, I mean, wasn't trying to be contrary or. Um, uh, I was, uh, I, I believe I was stoking the nerd flame. Maybe <laughs> what I, was I think that's what the word is. It works for me. I like yeah. it. It's all right. It's, it was a good conversation. And by conversation, I mean people yelling at me and stop following me. Well, let's, uh, before we go to the the the, uh, the people that ask questions, as we do yes. wrap up uh, Ultimate Peter Parker, um, this is the end of an era. And that's the thing. It's been an interesting 12 years. And I keep yeah, examining really these 12 years. And and certainly Ultimate Spider Man as Peter Parker has been a huge part of that. So okay. uh, I, I'm glad to see an Ultimate Fallout. You you were able to kind of take take the time to really like you know say goodbye to some of these characters. I, I, I was very happy about it. Number one, obviously, I, I love them like family and um, want to treat them like that always. And at the same time, I I like like everyone who's ever read a comic book has had certain bugaboos about comic book deaths and um, sometimes their vagueness or their non-committal, you know what I mean, B- both emotionally and physically. And I, I, I you know, we, we went to this fully committed and I, I go, well, I, would, I, would, I, I should make sure I write it that way and write the, the you know, about loss and grief and everything as, as honestly as possible. Um, and yeah, so that that's where well, that's where I was at. I was like, oh, good, I get to do the the comic death that, and you feel it, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and hopefully people would, and they did. And I've, I really, I've never gotten more emotional you know, emails and tweets and stuff from people. It just it keeps coming over and over and over again. The whole month it's been going on um, since he since he died. And it was so funny because you know you call it death of Spider Man, and uh, so we even kind of brace him for it. And, uh, and 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 still, people were very emotional about it, and it was really, 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 really great. Uh, which which uh, gets me to my other um, observation I wanted to make about the announcement of the um, uh, new Spider-Man was how sometimes we joke or are scared of what goes on in the combo community on the internet. Um, and I will never again ever feel uh, weird about it because. Um, the response from the internet um, seems pretty cool overall. You know, with with the conversation you kind of thought you'd get. You know, the the conversation on the USA Today comments section of the article, which I did not know existed, uh, was horrifying. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, even even uh, our, our 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 lovely. Uh, uh, Rich Johnson um, was able to cobble together an article from it. It was so horrific. <laughs> it was, 
and I, I had not seen it. I, I literally did not know they had a comment section. Um, and and uh, uh, somebody had forwarded it to me and goes, hey, scroll down. And I was like, holy, oh, my God. Yeah. Well, really unbelievable. <laughs> You know, and, those... and, I, and I, guess, I guess again we learned that uh, what, what, what's the what's the joke that why can't bigots ever spell the word bigot? That's what you, that's what you learn. <laughs> well, you know this. I, I'm looking forward to the, the the full story, man. I mean, I you know, I, I... yeah. I mean, and the one thing I I, um, I kind of have to brace myself for is um, the, and and I'm fully aware of it, but there, there's a tendency for people to judge a first issue. Against the entire twelve issue run, 12, I mean twelve year run of Peter Parker's run, and that I, I you know what I mean? You're going to have to sit with it for a little bit and let it build, um, so you can understand Miles the way you understand Peter. You know? Well, yeah, no, I look so. forward to the differences, and again, this is uh, yeah. a different character. Yeah, but with some a different people are going to read the issue and literally compare it to three thousand pages of another story. Sure. And uh, and it, you know, well, that's I, I the internet. People, uh, yeah, and you know what I mean. I you do. Know. No, I, t- <laughs> I totally All do. Right. Um, oh, no. the other rumor, is, as long as we're on Miles, Go there's on. another rumor I wanted to squash. <laughs> and this was actually a um, couple of headlines about this that kind of annoyed me. Um, th- there is, there is, a, there is, a, there is a, an element of the Miles Morales new Spider-Man story that involves a charter school. Yes. And because there's a mention of a charter school clearly you can gain just for the mention of a charter school without knowing if I'm pro it or against it or in what context the charter school will be being used. Clearly, I'm anti-union. Wow, that's a good I leap. just wanted to say, yes, this was brought up a couple places. I didn't know this was an issue. I just wanted to say for the record that I have been a member of the Writers Guild of America since I think about 1994. I am a dues-playing Union member, I am not anti. I, I couldn't be more anti. Like, I, I'm in a union. So, Understood. So that I just want to say that. Thank you. Fair enough. And then the other obvious question that's out there, um, probably, and or I should ask, has it been asked to you? You are writing about a, a character of color. You are white. What qualifies you to write this story rather than? I'm white. Aren't you I'm, white? Um, don't label me. <laughs> You're clear. As, uh, uh, as they said in Space uh, Jam about Larry Bird, you're not white. You're clear. I I will write it in the same uh, way I write a blind Catholic lawyer. Fair enough. And uh, all these other things that I'm not, which are almost everything that I write, but I physically am not. Okay. I'm not Jessica Jones. I'm not Mary Jane. I'm not you know. Sure. And yet I'm all. And yet I'm all of them. Um, yeah, I, I'm writing it honestly. That's what right. That's what you do. That's what you, that's what writers do, man. You you uh, you find a voice and you and you transcribe it. And so I, I I literally can't find a character that I'm working on now that is me. You know, so it, it, it falls under that category. Um, Luke Cage. I I don't know sure. what else to point at that that points that I I have I don't have this issue. Okay. I have, I have a pretty good sense of who he is. I, I usually, just so people understand the, the, the process, I, I find someone in my life as a starting place. You know what I mean? And, and build their voice from there. And, uh, and, and that's, and that, that's uh, been a very successful uh, situation for me. And I've done it yet again. Do they have charter schools in uh, Portland? I don't know. Okay. But I'm not using them as the basis of mine. I have a specific couple of schools that I'm using. Okay. So. That you've encountered or whatever, or you've researched? Or... Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Encountered, visited, been to. Gotcha. Reported from. Yep. Okay. I got way into it, man. It's very interesting. Very cool. Um, and not a political statement, just an interesting thing that's going on in our world that I haven't seen. Um, you know, Joe. Joe had had hipped it to me. He said, "You know, the, you know what's cool about this is that no one this year this hasn't been done to death." Right. This is an interesting modern story of of what our world's like right now. And I was like, "That's fucking great." You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, uh, 
and uh, I, I'll, I'll take a good idea from anybody, and Joe's often filled with very good ones, um, also with crazy ones that I, I, I smile and wave and walk away from. But uh, um, when he's on, he's on, and this was, a, this was a great one. No, and I think that's been the strength of Ultimate Spider-Man is showing a different way that Peter Parker yeah. has dealt with the modern world, and now Miles will deal with this modern world, his modern world, which obviously will be different. And like I said, I think... Different only means uh, you know good new story ideas. So yeah, just you know. it's just it's right right for story ideas. I haven't seen done to death. There you go. Uh, Miles will also have the internet, so there's that too. You know, and that is something that is in, that plays in an interesting way in the superhero world. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago talking to Matt Wagner about this, and that how can you have a secret identity? With the internet, and it's something you guys have played with on Powers and stuff too. Oh, and and Daredevil was the whole point of Certainly. the Daredevil run. Certainly, yeah, and and continues to be what Daredevil's about. You know? which I'm th- th- thankful for, by the way. Very cool. No, honestly, I, I well, well, we'll see how it goes, man. Good luck, and uh, and like I said, I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm I am excited for the difference and the change. Change is good in my world. All right. You I didn't like say it. that like, good luck, man. You know? No, no, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, Good whatever. luck with that boat with a hole in it. See you later. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding the W. I'm doing the W with my fingers right now. Whatever. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Good luck. It's a little Seinfeld. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to elevate small talk to medium talk. Uh, exactly. I've been there loving you that. Have you, uh, you know, really? Oh, my God. It's been fantastic. The, the Lebanese not, chicken put me over. That killed me. The Lebanese, Lebanese chicken. chicken was one of their best episodes. I love that the ratings are through the roof for no reason. <laughs> I love that too, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, it's just uh, uh, Curb's been amazing. The first three, particularly, were were classics. And uh, uh, but nothing's better than Louis right now. Yeah, Louis, I like Louis a lot. Louis really is the show, man. Yeah, and I know, I know. I sound like I'm kissing a little FX ass here before I get my show greenlit, but I it, 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 uh, unrelated. No, I understand. And actually, I was uh, surprised this week back to MMA. Uh, they made a big deal with UFC. I guess. Uh, what happened? Uh, the UFC, the big mixed martial arts uh, league, is just cut a deal with Fox, and the majority of the programming is going to be on FX. So we could see Powers right after the Ultimate oh. Fighter or some of these other things. Oh, you see, like, Powers commercials during uh, it can MMA happen. stuff? Is that what you're saying? It could happen. It's going to start. It starts in November, I guess. Oh. But yeah, Fox is, uh, Fox is taking a great interest in. Uh, UFC and uh, mixed Great. martial arts. Yeah, there Great. you go. Exactly. Well, good luck if with I had, that. If I, if I had testosterone, <laughs> I would totally watch that. I understand. Okay, and to wrap up, uh, here's about another 20 minutes or so with Brian a few years later. Uh, God, it was his uh, last uh, few writing assignments at Marvel. Among them, he uh, did Generations, which was uh, that one shot of uh, all the various uh, new legacy Marvel versions of heroes with the originals. And Brian did uh, the Spider-Man one-shot featuring Peter and Miles. And uh, Ramon Perez drew that. Pretty cool. Brian talks about that. We also get into a little Powers talk and a couple uh, celebrity encounters that Brian had, stories. Uh, I wanted to keep those in as well because they're kind of fun and relevant to what's going on at the end of the year with uh, projects like The Irishman and the like. So um, enjoy these uh, words of uh, Brian's regarding Miles and Peter as uh, he was wrapping up his involvement with both characters on this portion of Word Balloon. Okay, new Bendis tapes. I'm uh, very happy that uh, this is happening. And this is um, this is a layered, this is a parfait Bendis tapes. Because this is a layered, a layered Bendis tapes. You get it, exactly. A, a stitch together. Yeah, because um, you just did the press conference today. Uh, hi, Brian. I'm sorry. Brian Bendis, everybody. Hi. <laughs> uh, Brian and... Uh, hi, John. Good to see you, Derek. Good to hear you. Dave Marquez, Brian, and Tom Brevoort yes. addressed the uh, press with Marvel and talked about uh, the Defenders, uh, the free comic book day, and, of course, the ongoing series that follows. One day soon, I'm going to have David Marquez come over here, and we'll do this together with him. Yeah, well, he's, you know, I had him and uh, R.J. Ryan talking about the Joiners. Sure. Their, their 3D book and everything. And, and you know, David's just been busy with the new baby, and I would have had him on. It's a very, very busy year for David. And, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And people know. Like, he's never, you know, you know, he missed the deadline in Civil War, went a little late because of, of the baby. Sure. So, But it is a very cute baby. Well, that's good. Civil War did get finished, and, and the baby is, is good. So everything worked out. Excellent. But, yeah, but we'll get him on. He's a, he's a fascinating individual. And, uh, yeah, smart guy. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get into it. Excellent. So, 
And and yeah, yeah. no, you know, and it was funny too because we did this press conference and we didn't get the images until after the press conference. They didn't send it to the <laughs> press. So it was kind of hard to formulate questions and everything, but it was a good conversation. We Oh, so I was really talking out of my ass. That's I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love to hear that? But before I've we get talking to people, had no idea what I was talking about. Before we get to that, um, yes. you, you've also announced that um, the Spider-Man uh, sequel is yes. finally is finally happening, and that's great yes. because you left us on a really interesting cliffhanger of uh, Peter back in the six one six takes a look at the internet and says, "Gee, I wonder if there's a Miles Morales here," and then he sees this, "Oh shit!" And, you know, or "Oh no, what?" Miles. <laughs> yes. Now, so, uh, yeah, I, I was uh, always eager to do this again. And then, um, you know, the events uh, of, of the Marvel Universe uh, conspired against it. But it wasn't like, oh, my God, if I don't do this story this year, I'm never going to get to do it. I was like, no, we'll n- know when it's time. You know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't, like, panic too much. I was just like – it. Uh, well, we'll find out. And it was funny because literally not a week goes by where someone didn't ask me about uh, that page. That page, that last page of Spider-Man, uh, it has eclipsed what's behind the closet door in New Avengers. And um, and, and it was great. And I, I loved it. But I, I did have an answer. And I did. So I didn't want to be too cheeky about it online. Uh, but, you know, I was I was happy that it always stayed. And then when a Miles came to the 616, um, uh, some people thought the story was over, but when, um, I decided to stay, uh, on Miles, uh, on Miles' book, when he came to 616, one of the things was, oh, and then we get to do, uh, Spider-Man, um, uh, it, with them both here, right? Yeah. And, and then follow through with that, and that'll be even more interesting because, um, whatever the, that mystery is will reveal itself and Miles isn't going home afterwards. It's going to be here, right? Sure. So so that got very exciting. And then it just became a, uh, of when and where, and I kind of knew it was going to be a little times away. So I dropped Peter in the first issue of Miles' book last year just to, you know, so people know I, I, I wasn't going to ignore that they had met. Sure. I mean, I wanted people to know where they stood with each other. Mm-hmm. Just so we've laid a little little bread base. And then, uh, and then, and then, but building all this time towards um, what could happen between Peter and Miles, if if ever they were have to ever have a, a big epic emotional um, mini event for themselves, and here we are. Very cool. So, and who's yeah, the artist? Uh, it's Sarah Pacelli. I wouldn't do it without her. Very cool. So um, uh, she. Uh, the reason I think people tear up at the first series. Is because she, um, I think it's a perfect example of her of her abilities as an artist. So I did tell her that in the first script. I went, I think the first miniseries is the best thing you've ever done. So top that. Wow. And um, yeah, I mean, it like like so just do so just be the best version of yourself you've ever been. <laughs> and um, and I'm very very excited about it. And I was working on uh, an issue last night, so it's very fresh on my mind. Very cool. You know, what? where would you, without spoiling, say, uh, you know, the classic line, great power becomes great responsibility. Where, where's the level of responsibility Peter has when he looks at Miles? Well, that's that's it. How much did he feel when it was like, okay, I'm going home to my own dimension, good luck? And how much does he feel now that he's here? Sure. And um, the events in Peter's life as they unfold over the course of this year will um, – will 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 alter the relationship between Peter and Miles as well. Very cool. And it, I mean, do you do you talk to Slot about this in terms of? Uh... Oh yeah. Well, no, number one, I we have Nick Lowe, who is our uh, both of our sure. editor. He, so he's able to uh, look at the bigger picture, not only Peter and Miles, but of all the Spider books. Yeah. But really, when you think of, and it is quite amazing <laughs> that there's this many Spider titles. Yes. And they're all unique, and all have um, kind of you know why they're being published. Like, you know, sometimes if there's like 16 X-Men books, there's like three, you go, why are those being published? Yeah. You know, <laughs> they, each book needs to thematically identify itself. Like this is why this story is being told. Right. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, so, so I, I, Nick's amazing and he's able to do this with, 
a handful of spider characters, each of them having an individual unique voice and, and take on the world. And so he's the one who uh, balances me and Dan uh, very, very, very shapely. Because, by the way, not only for team-ups and stuff like this, but plots. And, you know, make sure we're all not, you know, that each one's doing something unique and original with their spider characters. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you would hate if, like, Peter Miles both fought Dr. Octopus and beat him up the same way in the same month. Sure. That would be, that would be uh, crappy editing. <laughs> but instead we have a, a masterful editor who, who has literally been on Ultimate Spider-Man since its heyday, since its Peter Parker heyday. Um, so, yeah, so Nick is, Nick is great. That's and, cool. Yeah. You know, I just had a long conversation with Dan. And uh, I, know, I, I, I marked it to listen to. Oh, thanks, I saw man. it this morning, yes. Because <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we got into a lot of the other Spider-Verse books and Spider-Gwen and Silk and, uh, you know, and Venom. And I, it was really interesting mm -hmm. to kind of touch base and, and, you know, see what's going on. Because I have to confess, I, I haven't been keeping up on all the Spider-Books. And also I saw Latour. There's a lot of Spider-Books. Yeah, there are yeah. a lot of Spider-Books. Yeah. I, I saw Latour at C2E2 and we're long overdue. And you have that nice crossover with, uh, with Miles and Gwen. Yeah, with him. And we talked yeah, about that know, a little I, bit. I think I, I think I told you. I, I uh, you know, I don't know Jason at all. I mean, yeah. like, you know, I, I know some people who listen to these uh, or follow us on Twitter, and sometimes we're all goofing around with each other. They think we all live in a clubhouse or something yeah. like the real world. <laughs> um, particularly the Portland creators, like we all live in a house, right? Right. Um, but but you know, a lot. So, well, some of us don't know each other at all. Like I don't know Jason the tour at all, and uh, it was actually Nick's idea to bring us together on on that uh, he goes hey you guys should do a, 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 a crossover and then immediately we got on the phone just just to see if there was an idea there and as soon as we got to the um spider gwen would be miles's girlfriend from canada that no one's ever met no i have a girlfriend she lives in canada you just don't know her um that, that then we had to do the storyline you know yeah uh and and it was one of those things where i didn't know this guy and we bounced back and forth, and it was absolutely lovely from top to bottom. Cool. It was just lovely. That's great. That's great. It was lovely to work with, and it was just one of those. See, this is why you do stuff like this. Yeah. I had a completely yeah. lovely creative experience with people I didn't know. Fantastic. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, and you know what? You always hear the bitching, so I like to share when there's a nice thing. The good stuff. Absolutely, man. Not going to be a headline story, but if I'd like, like to know. Jason Latour is fun to work with. Before I forget, with Spider-Man, um, you've also got the Generations issue, and we talk a little bit about yes. that in our big conversation, our Uber yes. conversation. But, no, um, so, yeah, so th that's good because they have some people have asked, like, what's the difference right. between, um, like, what Spider-Man 2 is and what Generations is? And I have to be careful because there's things about Secret Empire – that uh, I shouldn't spoil, okay. right? So I have to be careful. What so what's going to happen in generations is real. It's really going to happen. Uh, is a different type of story, um, and I think the best way I can describe it to fans that are older than twelve is um, generations. Is Peggy Sue got married and <laughs> um. Spider-Man 2 is like the best parts of all the other movies. <laughs> Which other movies? Copa all of them. Okay. All of them. Okay. Human Centipede, um, <laughs> Mall Blart, Bart Cop, whatever that was. Paul, Paul Blart, uh, Mall yeah, Cop. Yeah. That was the whole Adam Sandler, Happy Madison, oh. all those things. Okay. <laughs> Gee, great. <laughs> That's funny. I, you know, I have to say, I just saw Peggy Sue got married again like a week or two ago on one of the encores. And I'm like, oh, you know, this is better than I remembered it being. No, it is because it's, it's emotionally honest um, yes. uh, storytelling. And what I like about it, when I'm referring to when people say, uh, what, what, how, how is Generations Like Peggy Sue Got Married? It was much more about the emotion of the moment than it was about we got to get it back in time, you know, it's not sure. like the most time travel stories are about shit. I got to get back to my time. Right. Whereas, um, whereas this was more about the emotions of what happens if you ever saw what you saw. Yeah. And no, and she was, she was enjoying herself. And she's like, yeah. I'm going to go discover the Beatles. You know, no, a little shit like that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my microphone muted at that point and, uh, we, you know, hung up on each other. I unmuted my microphone. We started our conversation again 
And uh, we got into, we were done talking about Francis Ford Coppola and moved on to a David Mamet story that, frankly, I don't remember Brian telling me. So if he did before, remind me and go, yeah, John, that was, uh, actually, you know, last year during a Bendis tapes. It really seemed like a new story to me. But uh, here's a great Ma- David Mamet story encounter that uh, Brian had on uh, that as we pick up our conversation on Word Balloon. Remember, it was the, the, the story I told you about David Mamet casting right next to us. No. I never told you this? I don't think so, man. And thankfully, right, well, we're recording. So, <laughs> All right. So last year, last summer, um, I, I would spend my weekdays uh, in, in Los Angeles at the Powers Writers Room uh, just for a few weeks. And um, it's in the Sony building, and there's other Sony things going on in the mm-hmm. building. And um, uh, it's actually a very historical building. It's a very cool place to be. And um, – and, and there's a casting office not right down the hall from us. So quite often there would be this parade of uh, types of people. Maybe we're oh, today they're clearly auditioning blonde people, you know. And uh, um, and then every once in a while there would be like this pack of like pretty well-known actors are all there to for a pretty big gig, like a, a gig big enough where known actors would, would audition for, right? Okay. And and it was cool. And and sure. uh, and then and then we're all in the writers room, and then. Um, Ramey, the showrunner, who I believe you met, um, uh, came in the room and goes, uh, Brian, David Mamet's in the hallway. And I'm like, what? And then I literally like ran in the hallway. Lo and behold, David Mamet and Al fucking Pacino are casting what turned out to be this play that didn't go very well, uh, this Broadway play. It's a two-hander. It's, this, it's, it's Al Pacino is this crazy billionaire and he's pretty much just lambasting his assistant the entire play, right? Okay. So they're looking to hire the assistant. Mm-hmm. So who is there is these three young actors who are the only who are the last who have done so well they're auditioning for Al Pacino under David Mamet's direction in the room right next to my office. <laughs> I literally sit in my office. And through the air vents, listen to Al Pacino yell Mama dialogue for hours. Wow. I recorded it and sent it to Fraction. I was having the best day. <laughs> the three young actors, you know, it's so funny, you know, they're, 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 they're auditioning. They're clearly trying not to be nervous or truly trying to support each other and not, not to think about what they're, what they're about to do. But Al Pacino was Al Pacino acting. And the, the the halls are shaking with his voice because he's working the character out in the audition, right? Sure. So he's like, you know, but it, it sounds like the guy from Heat, you know, like big ass. It's like that kind of yelling. <laughs> and uh, um, so I finally, you know, I, as I described to you in other podcasts, how badly I screwed up my interview with him at CBR yeah. and how yeah. embarrassing it was. But it did give me enough of an in to walk into that room and say, hi, I'm Brian Bendis. I actually interviewed you for your graphic novel. David Mamet wrote and drew a graphic novel. Okay. And uh, so, I, uh, again, I, I walked in, and I didn't say, you are my biggest fan, but it was close to something like that. <laughs> David Mamet, you are my biggest fan. It was – it was. Uh, I did it again. I walked right into his office. I don't care what the fuck he was talking about with my hand outstretched and took his hand. And says, "Hello, Mr. Mamet. Have you given me a blah blah blah?" I attempted to apologize for an interview he had no recollection of giving. Oh man! And went on my way. It's okay. I felt. I finally got to look him in the eye and say thank you. I did it. I walked away. All right. All right. So <laughs> later, Rawl. So I'm getting nothing done. Here's the funny thing: the man who inspires me to do work more than anything in the world. Is in the room. I can't get anything fucking done. It's hours and hours and hours of listening to Al Pacino scream, and every time someone walks around, blah blah blah. Uh, they put a note on the door that said, uh, "Hey, if you're auditioning today, I'll blah blah blah." It's signed David Mamet, and I, I'm like, I should, st- I have to steal the signed David Mamet sign now. Oh my God. Like these are all the things that were going on instead of work. Um, and then, and then we were all working in the Powers Writers Room. Are you still there? Oh yeah, still is okay. Yeah. We're waiting in the powers writers' room, and then we're we're talking, and all of a sudden you could hear Al Pacino coming towards us in the hallway. You could just hear, you know, what's going on here? 
And we all turned because Al Pacino on his cell phone was like, I don't even know what building I'm in. And then he <laughs> looks at all of us and we're all looking at him. And he looks on the walls of what looks much like if you don't know what Powers is, it just looks like fucking madness. It's just like every gross thing Mike ever drew. <laughs> Every every image we're trying to recreate for the for the season, all of which like the big horrifying things, right? Yeah. And there's Nazi symbols, and you know, remember there's an episode where where Hitler gets killed. You know, there's Nazi symbols and violence and superpowers, and then he just walked away. That was my story, but it was it, you know, it was like one of those things where because of powers, I got to shake David Mamet's hand and say thank you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what are the odds of that? Sure. Him being that building to do that thing. That right next door. That's insane. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I thought I, so I literally said, oh, I'll t- can't wait to tell John I got something for the podcast. <laughs> something <laughs> happened. I left my house and something happened. That's awesome, man. No, that's huge. Ridiculous. Yeah. Too funny, yeah. man. I nerded out, but I, I'm it, 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 Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> and people didn't hear the setup, but you, you sent me the link for uh, the Godfather reunion at the Tribeca Film Festival. Yes, And we were talking about that, and like I said, I had read comments where, and I didn't realize it was Taylor Hackford was the moderator, uh, the great film director, and yes. obviously very happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's clear, listen, they're very old men. Yeah. And it's women. clearly the last time it's ever going to happen. Um, they, 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 they don't seem to all like each other all that much to start with. <laughs> so Interesting. You know, because they, they did a Godfather retrospective, and there's no mention of the third one. Well, yeah, isn't that weird? It's only Godfather one and two they're talking about. Well, Duvall obviously passed and was kind of mad and not not feeling like he was being respected money wise. I know all that. I know, but it's just funny they won't even talk about it. It's all that that was just like something was agreed upon. Like, where is three in your? I mean, granted, it's it's certainly a lesser film than the other two. It's a, it's just it's I, I, it's up to, it's with it's like the two Jakes. There's nothing really wrong with it. it, it it's it's sins are minor. But the fact that it has sins at all is its problem. Yeah, it just doesn't and, and you know what's funny? And Sofia Coppola is, is not ready for that movie yet. Yes. And she turned into such an excellent filmmaker. Yes. It's like you, you can even kind of forgive that now. Like, yeah, all right. Sure. Listen, but, he, but everyone else he's, he's related to in that movie, all, they all turned into like Academy Award winning people. So, totally. and so did she. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, no, so he was wrong to hire, but, you know. And they even talk about like he hired Talia. They hired Talia Shire, and he was about to get fired. You know, from the first movie, mm-hmm. you know, they talk about it. it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm only about 15 minutes into it, but uh, already no interesting stories. And yeah, like you said, it's interesting to see them all at this age, whatever willingness they are to interact with each other and stuff. At first, I didn't even exactly. recognize James Caan because I kind of blew off the intros, and I'm like, who's that to the left of Coppola? No, 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 don't blow off the intros. I'm Do not blow off the intros. Right, They're as great <laughs> as that uh, Republican debate where they none, none of them came out. <laughs> Do not skip the intros. When politics was still funny. Oh, yes. man. Yeah, that's – oh, then I'm right. I'm going to – all right, I'll do that and uh, yeah, I will try to provide it. a link. Yeah, okay. For there you go. Else. All right, so back to Spider-Man 2. So, yeah, that, and then we're doing that. Yes. <laughs> And we were talking about Peggy Sue got married, and it's uh, it's a very fine film. And yes, yeah. they, they, we brought it all back, full Coppola. Yeah, there full you Coppola. go. Exactly, that's what inspired the Coppola talk. Yeah. So the, anyway, the, yeah, the story of Generation, the story of Spider Man Two, very different. Very cool. Uh, okay. We'll hopefully pull on different emotional heartstrings. And then I'm you very excited about Generations because I'm getting to work with Maron Perez, who I'm a big fan of. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah. No, he's great. Oh, my God, he's great. Tale Sand of Sand is a uh, Jim Henson graphic novel, uh, The Sand of Time. I think people should check that out. Tale of Sand, yes. Tale of Sand, sorry. No, no. I, yeah, Not absolutely. much of a reader. <laughs> I knew Sand was in it. It's in such time. a great – it's a Something. silent graphic novel, and it's it's amazing. And I had him on and Steve Christie as well of Arcadia uh, when they first put it out before they merged with uh, Boom. And uh, no, it's it's great. Now Ramon's very cool, good guy. Yeah, I yeah had the good, pleasure. good, good, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so okay, and also real fast because generations uh, makes you think also of legacy. Are is something else coming up with you involving legacy at all? I am all in on legacy. I am totally in on legacy. I'm not. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say yet, but I'm very into legacy. I think um, some people can 
I think some people know that there's going to be a return to legacy numbering mm -hmm. on, on not every title, but some titles. I'm very excited about this because I have written a lot of Spider-Man and I would like credit for every single issue I wrote. So <laughs> I understand. I just had this uh, talk with Dan because yeah. I was trying to figure out Dan's number of Spider-Man issues. And uh, I'm like, you know, and it's funny because he told me, your caveats and Brevoort's caveats and like what you're, am I right? No, you say everything only counts. Brevoort, Brevoort's only one of the caveats. So this is our funny bugaboo. He thinks like annuals and special issues don't count. And I'm like, any script I handed in that said Spider-Man on the title, it counts. Yes. Annuals, mini series, specials, they all count. Sure. I agree. So. I agree. And, and I know Dan, I think leans a little towards Brevoort where he's like, yeah, I don't count those. And I'm like, it like I said it to him. I'm like, you're not. Yeah, well, they, 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 they are, they are, they have, they have drunk <laughs> the same Kool Aid many years ago. But um, they're, they're very much the same, like the same kind of person. It's very cute. I could see uh, fans doing that. I, I can. I, I'm sure there are fans that'd be like, yeah, those don't count. So no, no, they, no, no, there are. <laughs> I'll, 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 I should say Tom has evidence that he's correct in that what fans think of this, but I don't. I know yeah. I. I work very hard in every single issue, and I'm counting every single issue. This is so. this is the same kind of conversation I have with Marty Pasco about Superman, because well, I did a lot of things that were specialty things that you know only the American Dental Association you know had. had. I'm like, yeah, it counts. If you wrote a Superman story, it counts, man. Because he, yeah, you put the same effort in, absolutely. So I get it. All right, well, that's Seven, cool. seventeen years ago, me and Kyle Gossett from the uh, um, the Red Star yes. did a, a free Spider-Man comic. For a product that, I, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you what it is. I count that. I understand. <laughs> there you go. Hilarious. No one's ever seen it. I once wrote four uh, custom comics for Marvel, for BBDO, for a diversity program. Uh, they ended up not getting published. Uh, no one's ever seen them except for some um, sections of them I repurposed for other stories. And I count those. <laughs> So there you go. As I said, the Alpha and Omega of Miles Morales, the character of the decade as far as I'm concerned, and I think most of you would agree. I uh, will chat with his creator, Brian Michael Bendis. Uh, more to come as uh, 2020 uh, comes into play on Wednesday, but uh, you might hear some more word balloon before uh, the end of the year. Uh, a couple more uh, reruns I wanted to get out there uh, to wrap things up for the year. But uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this conversation, these conversations with Brian. Uh, thank you very much to my sponsors, the League of Word Balloon listeners, my patrons via Patreon, patreon.com slash Word Balloon. Thank you greatly for your support, League. And uh, in these closing hours, uh, make sure you go to Aftershock Comics website, our other sponsor, because uh, they're doing a great end-of-the-year sale, and you've still got a few hours left to take advantage of it if you're listening to this before uh, New Year's Day. And uh, place an order. Because everything on their e-store is 50% off. And if you live in the U.S. and you have an order of $50 or more, you'll receive free shipping. And they've got graphic novels there, aftershock paraphernalia, shirts, mugs, you name it. And also uh, various uh, comics of uh, convention specials and graded comics. And uh, you name it. I mean, again, uh, great books from Aftershock. I love the creators. Uh, some of them are my friends like Bill Hester and Cullen Bunn and Tim Seeley and the like. And uh, new people that I've enjoyed talking to like uh, Stephanie Phillips and uh, Matthew Clickstein among them. And, of course, uh, the greats, Marguerite Bennett and Garth Ennis and Brian Azzarello and Paul Jenkins have Aftershock books and a whole lot more. You're going to find great books at great prices and uh, a great deal, 50% off at the e-store. Go to AftershockComics.com. Thanks again for listening to Word Balloon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, I intend to do at least one or two more shows before we wrap things up for 2019. Until next time, thank you for listening. Word Balloon is a copyright feature of Shaky Productions, copyright 2019.